Okay. Everything seems to be running well, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Hey there, everyone. If you're new here, my name is Caden. I'm a trans man. I've been on testosterone for a year and three months, roughly. I got top surgery eight months ago, and I've currently been doing a lot of research into a certain topic revolving around transness. And not only because I'm trans, but also out of pure curiosity and wanting to be educated on this subject, because I didn't know much about it. Today we're going to be talking about bottom surgery, specifically phalloplasty and metoidioplasty on the AFAB side of things for my trans masculine people out there. The only scripting in this video are some very important talking points that I don't hear many people talking about, and not only that, but important lines of information regarding these important talking points. I do want to place a big content warning on this video, just for my sensitive viewers. There will be terminology geared towards AFAB anatomy and discussion of possible negative side effects, which can sound pretty gory. However, if you are indeed a trans person, specifically a trans masculine person looking to get phalloplasty or metoidioplasty, I would heavily recommend watching this video just to make sure that you have a good grasp on what you want, what kind of things you're looking for, and I'm here to discuss with you the different kinds of things that are important during one of these procedures and things that can make such a big difference on the outlook of your surgery. So go ahead and strap in, get ready, because this one's going to be a doozy. Let's talk about bottom surgery. A lightly scripted PowerPoint by me. Horizonborn. A phalloplasty is a plastic surgery procedure performed to construct, repair, or enlarge a or the penis, according to Merriam Webster. There are four methods of phalloplasty that are researchable on the internet. There might be more, of course. If so, make sure you ask your surgeon about them and where they're, you know, we'll, we'll get to that. But Radial forearm flap, shortened version RFF. Here's an illustration. This illustration will remain on the screen, but the location of the little purple markings will change based on what kind of surgery we are discussing at that moment. Interior lateral thigh, shortened version ALT. Abdominal. And musculocutaneous latissimus dorsi flap shortened version, MLDF. Metoidioplasty is the surgical creation of a penis using your existing genital tissue according to the Boston Children's Hospital. Let's talk about some specifics. My first meeting with a bottom surgeon was with Dr. Danny Hanna. Here's a photo. He's a handsome gentleman. He's from Serbia, I believe. Beautiful surgeon, very kind, considerate. His staff is wonderful. Uh, they were all very respectful to me. Not a word was said about my identity. It was just, I was another person coming into their clinic. This meeting was in Frisco, Texas. Here's a very low-res picture. I am so sorry. I couldn't find a better one. I really couldn't. And I'm only comfortable sharing this because I traveled over 600 miles to get there. So I'm nowhere near doxing myself or anyone else. His work is fucking beautiful. Let's be honest. He's a very talented surgeon. And like I said, his staff is great. Everything seems... He, he seems to be a very professional man. He, he takes his work seriously. He, he's been specializing in transgender surgery for quite a while now, as far as I remember. But he's just not what I'm looking for. And allow me to explain why. For this, we need to define some terms. Microsurgery is intricate surgery performed using miniaturized instruments in a microscope, according to Merriam-Webster. We're about to discuss two different types of microsurgery revolving around phalloplasty and or metoidioplasty. Urethral rerouting 
is taking the existing urethra and moving it to exit out of a different location, but keeping the length the same. The only reason that there's not a citation for this is because this is Dr. Hannah's rough definition of this word because I could not find one on the internet. Urethral lengthening, on the other hand, is the rerouting and lengthening of the urethra through the phallus according to Kaiser Permanente. I'm so sorry that I butchered that name, but we are going to go ahead and move forward with different aspects of phalloplasty and or metoidioplasty. Vaginectomy is a surgery to remove all or part of the vagina according to the Cleveland Clinic. Glansplasty is the procedure that creates the corona of glands, penis, or penis crown, which has a rounded projecting border according to Crane Center for Transgender Surgery. In simple terms, this is the procedure that creates the head of the penis. Testicular implants are testicular prosthesis, which are ovid structures that resemble the shape of an anatomical male testicle according to IM Gender Clinic, aka, this is what gives you your balls. Internal prosthesis can actually be an array of things. There are three that I know of that I was able to find on the internet. So let's go ahead and list those. The one piece isn't real. It's not real. It's it's actually quite mid, but let's not talk about that right now. This isn't that video. Uh, let's no, let's go ahead and get back into the into <coughs> into the video. Uh, the one piece internal prosthesis uses flexible or semi rigid cylinders. The two piece internal prosthesis is made of cylinders and a pump. The pump is hidden within your scrotum. The three-piece internal prosthesis is the most commonly used device. It consists of a pair of cylinders in the penis, a pump placed inside your scrotum near your testicles, and a reservoir of saline. Squeezing the pump in your scrotum moves the saline into the cylinders, which creates a rigid erection that feels natural. And bending your penis makes it flaccid. Before meeting with Dr. Hannah, I was unaware of what these terms meant, and honestly, I didn't know that half of these terms existed. I was also unaware of the impact that they have within your surgery, as well as the difference that, say, urethral rerouting and urethral lengthening can make on the outlook of your penis. After showing me his results, which are beautiful results, he's a very talented surgeon, don't get me wrong, he's great at what he does, he's very forward thinking and he's very honest about the possibilities and what he's able to do and not able to do and explaining things that he can and can't do such as microsurgery. He doesn't have a microsurgeon currently and he's not in a rush to find one because if you're in a rush to find a microsurgeon it's not going to be a good one. But let's go ahead and get into what I'm looking for in bottom surgery. I am looking for a very AMAB performing and appearing penis. I want a fully functional penis with testicular implants, like I want the in internal implants, I want testicular implants, I want a specific length, I want it taken from my left anterior lateral thigh. But I've known this for years, I want a glansplasty, like I want all of, I want the whole deal. Vaginectomy, I am the utter definition of a basic ass trans guy who just wants to have a cis performing and cis appearing penis. So that's just what I'm looking for, but he does not offer interior lateral thigh surgeries right now because he can't perform urethral lengthening. He can't do anything but MLDF and abdominal. He discussed both of these with me and he was explaining that with urethral rerouting for either of these surgeries, I would be urinating out of the bottom of my penis. Like, Now to help us demonstrate, we have this rat. This rat represents my penis. Now the perspective here is you are the pisser and you are looking down at the toilet as well as your penis. I'm gonna use images from Ransom's piss video. Uh, <laughs> 
This, this does not apply, not apply if, you are, if fat. you are fat. Now that we have the perspective in check... I would be pissing not out of the tip of the rat. We turn the penis sideways. I would be pissing out of the bottom, out of the stomach of the rat. And I'm not, inter I'm not interested in that. I'm really not. I want my piss hole to be where it belongs, which is at the tip of my penis, in my opinion. Now, other people are fully fine with Dr. Hannah. They, they have went through with surgery, and it looks great, and if they're happy, wonderful. That's all, that's all that they need, and that's all that I need for them. Good, good for you. But me personally, that is a deal breaker. So, instead of moving forward with him, my next consultation will be with one of these three doctors and or gender clinics. Mount Sinai Gender Clinic in New York City, New York. Bunky Gender Clinic in San Francisco, California. Or, with my personal choice, Dr. Curtis Citrullo. Look at this man. Look at him. He looks like a nice uncle. Uh, <laughs> it's not even that. I've, I've done a lot of research on him. I've met some of his patients. They're very happy. I've seen pictures of the penises in which he has created on the internet. Uh, he seems to be a very kind gentleman according to my friends and also some of the friends that I have who have gotten surgery with this man have shown me their penises consensually and he's quite talented. Um, he seems to have a very good grasp on what he's doing and I'm, I'm very much looking forward to moving forward with him. He used to be based out of Boston, Massachusetts. Um, put a picture up here, Caden. But he is currently moving to California, according to some of his nurses, uh, because I have contacted his gender clinic, and he is moving. Uh, because Boston, Massachusetts is probably not the best place to own a gender clinic, because, you know, there's not many sales, not a lot of people are going to go to Boston, they're going to trust California or New York, because they're bigger and they're more populous and... It's just more well known within the United States that if you're going to get a gender surgery, you're probably going to want to go to California. And second off, if you don't want to go to California, you're going to go to New York. It's a 50-50. It's a 50-50. And why I'm moving forward with them is the fact that the Bunky Clinic and the Mount Sinai Clinic are what Dr. Hannah suggested to me after I explained to him that I'm looking for a very cis-appearing and cis-performing penis. But I myself, like I mentioned, have done a plethora of research on Dr. Citrullo, and I would really prefer to move forward with him rather than just with these clinics, with doctors that I've never heard of. So, moving on. Let's talk about something that I feel like isn't discussed enough. The potential risks of phalloplasty and or metoidioplasty. Necrosis is the death of most or all of the cells in an organ or tissue due to disease, injury, or failure of blood supply, according to Oxford languages. Infection is an illness caused by germs, such as bacteria, viruses, and fungi, that can enter the body, multiply, and then cause an infection, according to the Center for Disease Control, otherwise known as the CDC. Sepsis is the body's extreme response to an infection, according to the CDC. Other potential risks within these surgeries are flap loss, urethral complications, wound breakdown, pelvic bleeding or pain, bladder or rectal injury, lack of sensation, prolonged need for drainage, or need for further procedures. I have a few more things that I just need to say before we can even consider ending this video. So strap in. Obviously, there are many tiny details, minuscule details, about bottom surgery which differ from surgeon to surgeon, and what you're looking for is very unique to you. So, 
Of course, make sure that you find a surgeon that is providing the things that you're looking for. Um, but let's make something clear. Of course, not all of the things that are important to me will be important to you. So please do not take my word and my wants pers with, with my personal bottom surgery as gospel. I am not God. <laughs> I am not an all-knowing man within this stratosphere of trans surgery. Obviously. I, I want a very specific thing, and that is what I'm looking for, and that is what I will move towards having. So, of course, just... Take time to think about things that are important to you within your surgery and learn what type of things you want for yourself, as well as the things that would prevent you from moving forward with an individual surgeon. What are, what are your red flags? What are your deal breakers? What are things that would stop you from discussing surgery with someone, whether or not it be bottom surgery? What makes you uncomfortable? What makes you comfortable? Make sure to discuss the numbers of procedures with your surgeon, if multiple are needed, as well as what will be done in each procedure, as well as the success rate within each individual surgery. Because some procedures will have multiple surgeries. A lot of the time, glansplasty and phalloplasty can be performed in one procedure, but those are two very different surgeries. Please do research on your surgeons. Do not go to a surgeon and sign papers if you haven't seen their work, if you don't know what they've done, if you don't know jack shit about this person. Do not commit to the cause. Do not. Do not. It's that simple. Ask them about their history with your specific procedure. Discuss things that are important to you within your surgery. And just so you know, most surgeons require two notes from therapists proving that you're mentally capable enough to actually consent to this surgery, that you're not thinking about self-harm, you know, that you won't go off the deep end from this, you know, as well as a note from your gender therapist stating that you've been on testosterone for, a le for at least a year. A lot of bottom surgeons will not perform bottom surgery on you if you have not been on testosterone. A lot of bottom surgeons will not per perform bottom surgery on you if you haven't been on testosterone for a year, specifically. Have to have been on testosterone for a year most of the time. I would say probably about 80% of the time a bottom surgeon will not perform a surgery on someone who has not been on testosterone for that long. Some surgeons won't perform bottom surgery on people under 21. I don't know the percentage for that. Honestly, let me let me google it right now. Make sure you ask your bottom surgeon, are there any age limits on the surgery? A lot of the time they won't even see you or give you a consultation until you're 20. Um, and they might say, okay, we're going to have to wait until you're 21 to actually perform this. 
Sometimes they won't even give you a consultation until you're 21. It really depends. From surgeon to surgeon, it, it will make a difference. It also depends on the laws in your state. So make sure you do a lot of research. And if you're using insurance, make sure you look up whether your insurance would cover it. Personally, I'm pretty damn sure that my insurance would because my insurance covered my top surgery in full. So I, I was one of the lucky ones. I didn't have to pay a cent. So just make sure that if you had to pay for any part of top surgery, you're probably going to have to pay for part of your bottom surgery. If you had to play, pay for all of your top surgery, honey, I regretfully inform you, you pay him for that bottom surgery. I'd save up like $21,000. It, it's, it's expensive, bro. If, if it's not expensive, then they're not going to do well. You know what I'm saying? So just prepare. Save up. Please do not let a surgeon win you over with their charm and kindness. They are there to be kind to you. They are there to make you feel comfortable with them. They're there to make you feel less anxious. And they're there to do their job at the end of the day. But part of their job is making their patients feel at home and safe. Because if they don't feel safe, they're not going to perform surgery. They're not going to go through surgery with this person. I felt very safe with Dr. Hannah. He just didn't have the surgery I was looking for. That's the only reason I didn't move forward with him. I would definitely recommend him to people if, if what I have described earlier is something that you're looking for. Please, by all means, go to Frisco, Texas, see Dr. Danny Hanna. But me personally, I could not. I absolutely could not do it. You should know what you're looking for within this procedure. And if your surgeon or possible surgeon does not offer this, that is not the surgeon for you. And that's completely okay to say. Like, you can you can tell this person that I don't think I'm going to move forward with surgery with you. And please just say it like that. Just be like, I don't think I'm going to continue to pursue this with you specifically. Um, but also, they don't have to know. So if you want to keep it a secret that you're going to a different surgeon, honestly, I think I would suggest that over just telling this person, I'm not doing surgery with you. I, I think that that can be, that can come off as kind of rude, but you know, of course, be kind about it, be considerate. Uh, this is a person, this is not just a professional. At the end of the day, this person has spent a lot of their time, energy, and money on doing what they have been doing for years, and... Make sure that your surgeon discusses the risks associated with your particular surgery. Because not all of the ones that I've listed are risks for every surgery. And there may be more that I've missed. I am not a surgeon. I am not a doctor. I'm just an EMT. These are just things I know because I'm trans. These are just things because... These are just things I know because I found them on the internet. I didn't know... I mean, on the list of things that I googled, I googled, what are the risks for phalloplasty? What are the risks for metoidioplasty? Necrosis? An infection? And sepsis, I believe, were the three that were not on that list. But Dr. Danny Hanna discussed with me that necrosis is indeed a factor in his surgeries specifically. I don't know if it's every surgery... I don't know if it's, you know, it's a very low risk in certain procedures. I will say that. He did discuss that with me. But then again, please keep in mind, these risks can not only differ between surgery to surgery, but surgeon to surgeon. Of course, do not be rude to your surgeon, other patients, or any of the staff in these locations, despite whether or not you decide to move forward with the surgeon. You should not belittle your surgeon for not offering the surgery that you are looking for. I would never belittle Dr. Danny Hanna because I see his work. I see why he does what he does. And I, he's a wonderful person and I, I appreciate his confidence and his cause. Make sure to remember that these people are here to help people like us. They are not here for any other reason unless they also specialize in other things. Which, if that's the case, good for them. Earning that bank. Okay. 
Please remember, phalloplasty is permanent, just like a tattoo. Sure, there might, keyword, might, be procedures to reverse this phalloplasty, which I personally severely doubt this possibility, but there are probably more risks than rewards if there is a possibility to reverse it. So, before you sign papers and commit to something, just think about it. Think about it. Spend years thinking about it. I would not rush this if I were you. And I, I am me, and I'm not rushing it. I'm spending my sweet, sweet time waiting for Dr. Curtis Citrullo to update his information on Google and find his information. Um, I'm probably going to call um, his gender clinic after this just to see if they know anything about where he's located now. But then again, do not rush this. I want to clarify something. You do not have to get bottom surgery to be valid as a trans man or trans masculine person. And if anyone tells you otherwise, they are simply transphobic and utterly incorrect. There is nothing about you as a person that has to connect to the genitalia that you have. There is nothing about you as a person, as a brain, as a neuron within this flesh suit that you are equipped with that has to connect with the fleshy exterior or interior of your genitals. You don't have to have the same equipment that most people would associate with your gender or identity. You are you. Do not let other people determine what you should and should not do. Especially if you're an adult, you deserve to do whatever the hell you want to do. This is a free fucking country. Welcome to America. And if you're not in America, I don't know the laws there. I'm not. I'm not from a different. Like I, I immigrated here. But I, it's still. I'm, I'm from Puerto Rico. It's from a. It's a territory of a, of the United States. Like I don't. I don't know shit about the Dominican Republic. I don't know shit about Mexico. I don't know shit about the UK. I only know about Puerto Rico and the United States. That's all I'm educated on. So, of course, do research and think about it. Do you want to travel for this? Do you want to not travel for this? Of course, like, consider everything. Consider everything. It's a scary procedure. Phalloplasty, metoidioplasty, that shit can ruin you if it's done by a bad surgeon. I completely understand not wanting to get it. It's truly not a decision to be taken lightly, so please take your time considering whether you're absolutely certain about your stance on it. And with all of that being said, I'll make sure to update you all on my surgeon, surgery date, location in which I got the surgery after the fact, my happiness with the surgery, the success, and if I'd suggest my personal surgeon to others. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope that you feel educated and aware. I feel free to forward this video to friends, family, anyone who needs to hear it. I hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your days and weeks, and I will see you sometime soon. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs>